Hey, good morning, Brian Cook here, and uh, we're doing a quick deck list update on the Epic Storm. So if you haven't checked out the last video going over the big overhaul from version 8.3 to 8.5, we're going to cover a little bit of it, but I think that you should also go back and check out that League video where I do cover the changes between the deck versions. So in front of you is currently version 8.5. This is what I've been recommending to people publicly the last few weeks. Uh, this was a big breakthrough. So you'll see Wishclaw Talisman here, four copies of Mox Opal, uh, four copies of Veil of Summer, only three Red of Flame, a main deck Chain of Vapor. This is all very different compared to classic TES, as I like to call it. Uh, Veil of Summer is a huge upgrade when you're running Echo of Aeons. It has great synergy. You're not going to discard your opponent's Force of Will and then dr draw them into a new one. Uh, Veil of Summer just shuts that down, very similar to a Silence. Wishclaw Talisman is an artifact for Mox Opal. This list actually has 21 artifacts, which is pretty high. Uh, it's what this deck has needed for a long time in order to support Mox Opal. We knew Mox Opal was the future, and Wishclaw Talisman got us there. So we finally have enough artifacts to support Mox Opal. There's a Rite of Flame in the sideboard to Burning Wish for. I tried, I tried forcing it back into the main deck, and I actually found that I really like having a Rite of Flame of the Board to wish for. Uh, I know it seems silly, but it comes up more than you think. I've had lines where I end up with double Burning Wish in hand, and I just need to convert them to Storm, and like that happens. Uh, there's also games where you're like just short one mana of Ad Nauseam, so you Burning Wish for Rite of Flame, and then the next turn you Ad Nauseam. Those things happen. Uh, wish Claw Talisman can search for anything, meaning it can get Defense Grid, it can get the main deck Chain of Vapor. It gets Echo of Aeons. That's what really makes this list work, is that Wish Squad Talisman gets you Lion's Eye Diamond or Echo of Aeons. So if you Burning Wish for Echo, you can then Wish Squad Talisman for Lion's Eye Diamond. Things Infernal Tutor cannot do. And that's why Infernal Tutor has been relegated to the sideboard. So this list was really good. It gave me my highest match win percentage over a sustained period of time. Over 100 matches, I was over 70% uh, match win percentage, which is nuts. Uh, I can't say that about any list I've ever played in the past, but it's not great against Delver variants. And that's what we were trying to fix. So when you look at deck version 8.6, the main deck is exactly the same. Not a single card has changed. I did try some stuff in between with like four Rite of Flames and it just wasn't good. So we're going to move on. But this the main deck is perfect. In the board, you'll see that there's four copies of Empty the Warrens. So... In an effort to be Dalver and improve our blue matchups, or our non-blue matchups, I'm sorry. So if you read the article that I wrote called Using the Epic Storm Data, I talked about how my matchups against non-blue mid-range decks, they went down. And I think it's because we were too reactive with 8.5. We were boarding in just tons of permanent-based answers. Like, you would open up hands and it would just be like three bounce spells or a grape shot or whatever. And it was just too much, like, because you, we were trying to board out these six cards and board in six answers, and that's just not how you play Magic. So, with 8.6, we do still have some answers in our board, and they're very good. But when we board against these blue mid-range decks, we get to board in threats, too, now with Empty the Warrens, and that makes you a better deck. So, I'm not recommending boarding in all four empties. Don't do that. But against uh, Death and Taxes, like, I think that this is a very reasonable strategy right here. So, but against Delver, Delver's a little different. So, one, Noel Rod's been picking up a lot in play, which is kind of an issue. And Empty helps beat that, but Empty's also really cheap. And by that I mean it's easy to cast through Days, Spell Pierce, Force of Will, Force of Negation. Like, it will get you there. So, on top of allowing you to win through Noel Rod, it's very effective with our deck. The 4 Red of Flame, 15-0 uh, mana deck. Like, it's very good, you're able to cast it very quickly and efficiently, and your opponent doesn't know whether or not to force a well curl mox and things like that. So, how you board is, you actually end up boarding out all four Wishclaw Talismans, and then you board in Rite of Flame and three Empty the Warrens, and then another Chain of Vapor. So you end up with two chains, insert memes here, and what this does is it gives you two outs main deck to Norod, but it also slows down Delver Secrets, which allow your Empty the Warrens to race it. And it also, you can use Chain of Vapor to naturally build Storm Count for your Empty the Warrens, which is pretty good. What you do is you target uh, 
an artifact with Chain of Vapor, you sacrifice a land. You target another artifact with Chain of Vapor, you sacrifice land. Another artifact, sack a land, and so forth. And you can usually end up bouncing whatever their threat is as well. You replay all your artifacts, and then you empty. So this is how I'm recommending boarding against Delver at the moment. Uh, it's been doing well for me. So there's an anti-synergy between Wishclaw Talisman and Empty. So if you play both into your deck, what happens is you activate Wishclaw and you give them the Wishclaw Talisman, but then you cast Empty the Warns and all of a sudden your opponent has a tutor for their Goblin Token answer. You don't want that. No one wants that. So instead, we're just taking it out. We're not playing that game anymore. But also, when you do cast Echo Veons, protected by Valisum or Defense Grid, you're way more likely to win the game by just casting an empty from your hand and having, you know, 24 goblin tokens or whatever. Uh, your opponent has one turn to answer it. So they don't have turns of digging with cantrips and so forth. Uh, yeah. So this is the Epic Storm 8.6. It's been doing very well for me. Going back a little bit, this was 8.3 for, I know I mentioned it in the beginning of the video, but this was what we were looking like before uh, the innovation of Wishclaw Talisman over Infernal Tutor in the main deck. Only two mock soulful discard spells. Uh, these, this is classic TES in my opinion. It's still fine. It's just not as good as the list we've been playing recently. A lot of people have been asking me like, well, what if Veil of Summer's banned? Would you go back to this? And no, if Veil of Summer's banned, I'm not going to play this again. It's just not what I'm going to do. So I've thought a lot about it. I don't think Veil of Summer is going to get banned anytime soon. But if it were, I'd probably be playing more defense grids and maybe like a silence or uh, three defense grid, two discard spells in a silence. Because you can still cast silence off of Mox Opal and Lotus Petals or even Lion's Eye Diamond using Wishclaw Talisman. So, yeah, uh, I think that's all I have for now. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But this is the Epic Storm 8.6. Um, cool. Thank you for watching and uh, keep storming.